The library is nearly bare. You reach over to the empty shelf and grab a lovely handful of air. It's the thrilling tale of daily life at sea. Leisure Suit Larry's ship happens. It's the thrilling tale of adventure on the high seas. Leisure Suit Larry spends a night hoisting the old yard arm. Your attention, please. Paging Therese. Therese to the break room. Emergency cola run. It's the thrilling tale of whaling and whaling. Leisure Suit Larry in Thar She Blows. It's the thrilling tale of the world's largest cruise ship. Leisure Suit Larry takes an enormous ship. Nah, you've already read this one. Hmm, what's this? Huh, a children's science book entitled Fun with Electromagnetism. I think I'll scan a little of this first to see if it's something I want to read in depth. In 1823, English physicist William Sturgeon, at age 40, devised the first electromagnet. He insulated an iron bar by painting it with thick varnish, wrapped copper wire around the bar, then connected the wire to a voltaic pile. Hmm, I think I once had voltaic piles. Connected it to a voltaic pile and created a crude electromagnet that could lift pounds of iron. You too can have fun with electromagnets. Wrap any iron bar with wire and apply electricity, and we, you're having fun with electromagnetism. I think I'll pass on this one. Jeez, don't they have anything with steamy, raw, yet sensitive and meaningful sex? It's the thrilling tale of interpersonal relationships at sea, Yo, ho, blow the man down. It's the thrilling tale of rebellion at sea, Leisure Suit Larry in Mutant He on the Bounty. It's the thrilling tale of sailing seamen, Leisure Suit Larry in Blow the Man Down. It's the thrilling tale of exploration on the high seas, Leisure Suit Larry lands a hoe. It's the thrilling tale of shipwreck and rescue on the high seas, Leisure Suit Larry fills his rubber dinghy with seamen. Hmm, what's this? Oh, a book on that great aircraft manufacturer. Fucker, more than just an airplane. By someone named Drew Barrymore. Whoever he is. Hmm, I think I'll scan a little of this first to see if it's something I want to read in depth. Anton Hermann Gerard Fokker was born in 1890 in Java. At an early age, he began an airplane manufacturing business in Germany. During World War I, his factories produced triplanes and biplanes. He revolutionized aerial warfare in 1915 by mounting a machine gun on the front of an airplane, then synchronized the gun so it would fire through the blades of the plane's propeller instead of shooting them off. After the war, he turned to developing commercial aircraft. In 1922, he moved to the United States, where he died in 1939. Oh, I don't think so. We asked our loyal Leisure Suit Larry fans what they most wanted to see in the next Larry game. And here it is. You never change, Larry. You always would take any beaver you could get. You love the feel of a good beaver, don't you, Larry? While we all know how much you love to go down, Larry, you won't be doing any diving on this journey. Someone must have pushed hard to get his big submarine into that tiny hole. Your attention, please! Margaret has captured the Best Dressed Woman competition! Congratulations, Margie! Yeah, baby!
A clock with a pendulum is not a good idea on a ship. You've heard guys in the locker room talk about going around the world. Tiffany Lamp. Wasn't she the star of that Super 8 porn movie you used to have? There's a desk over there behind the bookcase. Excuse me, miss. Um, that's Ms. Victorian Principles. Nice to meet you. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Oh, I so love dual first names. One cruise I met Boutros Boutros Gali. Are you the ship's librarian? Yes, I am. Do you see something you'd like to check out? Oh. Oh, I'm sure you have something I could explore <laughs> in depth. All righty. What is your cabin number? Whoa, babe, slow down. Jeez, and women say I'm fast. Fast? Uh, well, sir, we check out books by cabin number here. Oh, zero. Zero? <laughs> Tight budget? No, you see... Uh, you don't want to know. Correct. Tickle your ass with a feather? <gasps> what did you say? I said particularly nasty weather. Oh. Really? So, uh, you got any good books? Oh, many kinds. Unfortunately, you're a little late. All the really good ones are already gone. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. What about these? Oh, those? Those are already checked out. To me. That's a lot of reading for one cruise. Not for me. I'll finish those tonight. In bed. Would you like to know what I plan to do tonight, um, in bed? I'll vote... Sleep? How's your book? Oh, quite uplifting. I so enjoy books affirming sound moral principles. Don't you? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I do. But, uh, don't you ever read anything um, spicier? Oh, no. Those books don't appeal to me. All that panting and groping. That raw animal passion. That, uh, well... It just encourages the wrong sort of thoughts. No, no. I only expose myself to great literature. I wish I was some great literature. Yeah, great literature. Yeah. But, um, what do you do for entertainment? Well, I start at one end of the bookcase and read my way through to the other. Unfortunately, I'm now on my third pass through most of them. Cruise ship life looks like an endless vacation. Don't you just love it? Sure, it's perfect. If perfect means knowing that every day you're going to have exactly the same food you had that day last week, it's perfect. But all the fun, the nightlife, the non-stop partying. Oh, well, not for us crew members. For us, it's more like never being able to leave the office. <laughs> How about me whispering a few Dewey Decimal numbers in your ear, Victorian? As if I haven't heard that line before. Men, you're all alike. 945.3 Oh, what are you doing? What do you think? Whispering Dewey Decimal numbers to you. Turn you on, huh? Uh, hardly. <laughs> I filed them all. Did I mention my name is Larry? Now would you like to have sex? You're disgusting. You'll never get anywhere with me, you pathetic loser. What can you tell me about the ship's captain? That Ms. Thigh? Uh, I know she's an excellent boss. I never see her. For some reason, she seems to spend an inordinate amount of time in her cabin. Paperwork, I presume. Uh, yeah, right. D 
Do you know anything about a Drew Barrymore? The famous author? Oh, but of course. I'm sure we have at least one of her books here in the library, but it may be checked out. Victorian Principles looks like she spent her whole life reading. But all librarians are closet nymphomaniacs. It's a well-known fact. It is? They are? It is in your dreams. Her long, luxurious auburn hair trapped in a stifling bun, Victorian Principles is a simmering sauce pot who never lets down her hair. Her classic bone structure, uncolored by makeup or other artificial enhancements, Victorian Principles is a steamy tea kettle of repressed sexuality. Her enticing eyes, suppressed behind scholarly horn-rimmed glasses, Victorian Principles is a bubbling cauldron of sexuality. Her creamy thighs lurking deep within a conservative dress. Victorian Principles is a textbook case of repressed sexuality. Her ample bosom securely pinned beneath her stout corset. Victorian Principles is a smoldering cauldron of pent-up sexuality. Wouldn't I love to roam through those stacks? usually wear hose. Sometimes I spray that on my drawers. Uh, oh no, I, I, I didn't mean... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Isn't this just the cheapest paper you've ever seen? I always buy mine in port whenever we pull into Mexico. I find theirs to be quite consistent. Your room? Hardly. I've seen the engine room. It's not great. In fact, it's a long way from great. Let's see now. We're not doing too well, are we? Oh, I don't know anything at all about that, but I'm willing to learn. These curtains match Victorian precisely. Conservative, stable, dull, and boring. And yet, well-made, trim, and nicely hung, too. Yes, Victorian has quite a set. Victorian has a petite incandescent lamp here for her late-night work sessions. Isn't that sweet? Victorian keeps photos of her family on her computer table. Isn't that sweet? A little girl and her pussy. Victorian's computer is as conservative as she. DOS 2.1 indeed! Even Victorian's pen is in perfect alignment. You've been known to pound a few in your day, but not rubber stamps. Not enough people refer to paste as mucilage anymore. You aren't thinking of fingering my mucilage, are you? Who, me? <laughs> oh, no. This book is entitled, Monotonous and Tedious, How to Meet Boring People. This book is entitled, Stodgy Is as Stodgy Does. This book is entitled, Prosaic and Uninspired, My Way of Life Can Now Be Yours Too. This book is entitled, Intensity Through Dullness. Prudish and proud. Yes, this gal brings new meaning to the word uptight. Hey! Huh? Huh? Yeah, isn't that two words? All right, she's a tight ass, okay? I'm sorry, sir. 
I'm reading that particular book. Oh, is it good? Oh, well, of course, sir. If it weren't, I wouldn't read it. Just a moment. Let me look that up for you. You never know when something should be more sticky. Maybe I can just slip this out of here while she's not looking. Congratulations, Fagin. Now what? No, I find nothing on that in our computer. Wasn't it Aristotle who said, Give me a big enough bottle of mucilage and I'll stick it to the whole world? Prudish and Proud, the gripping saga of three demure librarians who resist the temptations of the flesh and affirm their commitment to moral principles. Number 126 in a series of 200. Sounds right up your alley, Larry. Well, nice talking to you, Victorian. Perhaps I'll stop by later. All righty then. Good day. Excuse me, Mr. Laffer, but that book is checked out. To me. Why, where did that come from? My desk. Oh. <laughs> Here. Thank you. Toodaloo. Your attention, please. Ben has just beaten off all covers in the self-stimulation simulation. Cute decor, eh? Once your uvula was red and inflamed, but then you had it whacked off. Yeah, but at least I don't snore anymore. Yes, but you don't snore any less either. This ice sculpture of Captain Thigh as a mermaid is incredibly detailed, right down to her drippings. Oh. Help! Help! Oh, that wasn't worth it. Hey, look! Mexican cheese dip! You can't take that. And why not? Because that's nacho cheese. Oh. A large container of bean dip graces the buffet table. Whoa! Bean dip? And it's all you can eat. Mmm. I love bean dip. Just because it's all you can eat doesn't mean you're obligated to make yourself sick. Uh, why not? I don't think anyone will even notice that wee little laddie. You know, Larry, they only put 239 beans in that bowl of dip. Oh, really? Why? Because any more and it would be too farty. Hmm, that sounds like a Mark Sieber joke. Mayday! 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 Man overboard! Green has always been your least favorite color of meatloaf. Oh my god! No, Larry, it's not what you think. Those are slender mushrooms imported directly from the Klahani mushroom cellars of Issaquah, Washington. Oh, God. I was afraid they were turnips. Ah, lima bean uh, curd. 
sauce, paste. The PMS Bouncy is pleased to offer fresh salad every day, even when they're at sea. Oh, how do they do that? Simple, they get the greens by snipping the sheep topiary on the top deck. Oh, Greek salad. Yeah, baby! Your attention, please. Don has just captured the piousness portion of the contest. You've never tasted a cranberry banana squash couscous you didn't like. I've never tasted any. And that's the way it's going to stay. Mmm, just what you've been waiting for. Broccoli yogurt with tripe on the bottom. New from those fine people who bring you spork. Duh, I'll keep on waiting. Look, it's all you can drink. And free, too. Oh, you're just saying that. So I'll drink and drink and drink, and then I'll have to go pee a lot, aren't you? Yes. Well, isn't that why you spend so long alone in the bathroom? Well, <clears throat> no. That's a special table serving hot meat. Say, is it safe to let your meat hang that way? Yours is... Oh, never mind. Yeah, too easy, huh? Yeah, baby! <laughs> Wang is the PMS Bouncy's chief serving boy. What are you serving? We got spork, very best. You like, okay? Pork? Yeah, that sounds good. Jesus, Mary and Joseph in a tiny canoe. Are you deep? It's spork. I heard you the first time. I'll take one serving, please. You got it, boss. No complain, reader. Okie dokie. My God! What is that? Pike, I've been trying to tell ya! It's spork! Oh, the processed potted meat food product that tastes as fresh as home slaughtered. Just like Mom used to butcher. Very good, boss. Now you go. Hey, uh, what's with the accent? I did I. I knew I couldn't keep it up. I'm Chinese, you see, but me parents were Buddhist missionaries, so I grew up in Ireland. People stare when I speak normally like this, so I found it simpler just to sound like some bad Charlie Chan impersonator. Too much talk. More people need smoke. <laughs> you see? This glass is called a sneeze guard, although you can't imagine why. <laughs> oh, now I get it. This carving knife is extremely sharp, but it won't be sharp for long if Wang keeps using it to cut open his spork cans. What? Whoa! Keep hands away! Knife sharp, my knife! Use knife make living, Joe! You no take knife! Sharp? Slimy, but sharp. This powerful heat lamp slowly blackens the outside of the spork generating a pungent, acrid stench, distracting diners from the spork's normal pungent, acrid stench. Oh, no, 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 no! Keep hands off! You burn self, okay? Ouch! Hot, 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 hot. The heat lamp's turn-offs are bad hair days and men who take too long. Oh, baby, in this light, you look so good. The lamp is already turned on. It's beneath the sneeze guard and contempt. I think I'll have a hunk of your spork. This stuff is great. It's kind of like spam, only not so expensive. Now 
Now be sure not to exceed the maximum daily allowance. Those warnings are on the can for a reason, you know. Oh no! Not enough smoke! Must get more! No touchy! Your attention, please! Mark has just captured the temperance portion of the contest! Since Wang's not looking, I may as well steal his knife. Okay, but first you'd better let it cool. Okay, now. In a masochistic, self-abusive sort of way, you rather enjoyed that. It's not the best knife in the world, but carving spork hardly requires high carbon steel. The tiny lettering on the bulb reads Cyberlamp 2000 Long Distance Heat Lamp. 2,500 watts, guaranteed range 200 yards, not to be used in unapproved fixtures. Many of the upper-class passengers are enjoying a delicious buffet meal right now. Burly sailors from throughout the ship are just waiting for a chance to enforce this dining room's new no-dweebs policy. There are some signs near that door and more signs on it. There are some large posters on either side of that door. Impressive promotional announcements the size of movie posters are hung on both sides of the door. They read, Totally decadent. I was stunned. I found myself in a sensuous frenzy. An erotic ecstasy. Even better than cats. Wow. This ship has everything! This door is locked. There are several small signs on the door. Closed to the public, do not enter, members only, 18 and older only. Just chock full of tentacly goodness. Nice pot. Reminds me of my college days. The judge gave me six months probation. This shaker contains only genuine sea salt. Scraped from the hull of the ship before its annual hosing down. Pass the salt. That's not funny. Okay, you try making the jokes all the time. Do you know the three principal parts of the common wood stove? The lifter, leg, and poker. Apparently, these fish were on the wrong side in the seafood revolution. Mmm, cookie puss. Hmm, that's not bad. Considering it's been sitting out unrefrigerated for days. Oh. Your attention, please. Jen has just won the Strip Shuffleboard Tournament. And you should never watch laws being made either. Yeah, baby. No, not Fifi. 
You've always found the concept of sticking insects to curly paper appealing. These drawers haven't been opened since the Truman administration. The Caviar Master 2000 is for those who like their eggs fishy yet fresh. It's a tub of entrails and even worse stuff. Our artists drew a close-up of it, but it made our programmers ill. Some chefs aren't comfortable cooking without the traditional French tools. It's a fish wrapped in an old issue of Professional Hash Slinger magazine. Oh, good. My subscription just ran out. That fish has gone bad. How can you tell? Oh, the little things. The earring, the tattoo, the surly expression. Say, how about if I toss the fish and keep the magazine it's wrapped in? That's good. The Cyber Cheese 2000. Just add ingredients and step way back. Unfortunately, this isn't the portable Cyber Cheese 2000 with active matrix screen. Darn the luck. So that's why dinner was so late last night. These fish must not be very good. Huh? Why? They're working with a net. Adds a new dimension to last night's swordfish dinner, eh, Larry? Mm. Yeah. The refrigerator doesn't seem to be operational. The smell of rotten fish seeps out through the cracks in the door's rubber seal. At least you hope that's what the smell is. For the love of God! No! The garbage can is the only thing in this kitchen that's scrupulously clean. It's like they never throw anything away. There's nothing hidden in the garbage can, okay? You can see all the way to the bottom. But Allo always hides something in the garbage. Not this game. Munsell wouldn't let him. To save money, someone sewed the beginning of this towel to its end, making one long circle. While that may save money, it certainly doesn't encourage confidence in the chef's cleanliness. The label on the side says, Last Service, June 1954. A small label on the side of the roller towel says, Next Service, October 1954. Your attention, please. Don has just won the high-speed portion of the contest. This would be handy if you ever need to pass the pot, Larry. That's good, because when I grew up, we were so poor we never had a pot to pass in. <laughs> a pot to pass in, see, it's a little... <clears throat> It's salt, for Christ's sake, man, it's just salt. Do I have to describe everything for you? What are you looking for, a secret button that turns it into a letter opener or something? Do you think I have nothing better to do than sit here in this stuffy recording studio booth and read the names of things to the likes of you? What? I do? Somebody get my agent on the phone. Someone used this page from Professional Hash Slinger magazine to wrap old fish. Well, shouldn't that be a job for a professional fish wrapper magazine? This page contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese. The ingredients include beaver milk, as always, milk from the elusive Venezuelan beaver is much preferred, a pinch of salt, rennet, for which lime juice may be substituted in a pinch, and a hint of mold. Now for the details of preparation. Hey, you made a subiism. What? A subiism. You know, when you choose a word based on previous words. Okay, like you use the cliche in a pinch because you just finished saying the phrase pinch of salt. Get it? Damn, you're weird, Larry. 
Anyhow, there's more on the back of the page. Oh, you mean I have to click again just to hear the back? Oh, stop your whining. Here, the back contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese and kumquat quiche. The ingredients include beaver cheese and a sliced kumquat. You probably don't want to hear the rest of this either, do you? This magazine page smells like fish, probably because it was once wrapped around one. Clasping quite to paradise her own self, Lady Luck stands ready to shower riches on all those who pass beneath her. This is Han Ja'ub, the tiki god of war. Look at the rage and bloodlust in his eyes. This is Blo Ja'ub, the tiki god of love. Look at his warm, smiling expression. Your attention, please! Bob has just won the nude pole vaulting portion of the competition! The Paradise Casino is the proud possessor of the world's largest replica of Michelangelo's David made entirely from used playing cards. Yeah, baby! The world's largest Venus de Milo replica, constructed entirely from used casino dice, stands before you nearly complete. We're shaking things up for you. Progress rolls on. Pardon our dice. Bob Bit, the sculptor, is hard at work putting the finishing touches on his masterpiece, the Venus O'Dice. Hello? E excuse me? Mr. Sculptor, sir? <clears throat> I guess he's busy. Bob Bit, the sculptor, wouldn't appreciate you climbing up his scaffold and disturbing him while he's completing his masterpiece. From way down here, it's difficult to be sure, but there may be a metal spike protruding through the ceiling. This closer look reveals the Venus O'Dice hasn't been completely glued together yet. Nobody will ever miss a couple of these dice. <laughs> this is all that remains of Bob Bit's once proud Venus. I hope you're happy. <laughs> Sculptor Bob seems more than just a little distraught. He'd prefer to be alone with his shattered dreams. <laughs> Drinks, anyone? Martini. Shaking. Not stirred. Yeah, could I get a little bean dip over here? Thanks, baby. You're great. Oh, oh no. That palm looks a little hairy. Uh, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. The Paradise Casino has chosen a unique way to display the grand prize in the Progressive Slot Machine Challenge, Carcano. 
Disco will never die. If there's a god, it will. It's Snow Jaab and Reem Jaab, those lovable, crazy, happy-go-lucky alcoholic Tiki brothers. They had their own series on Fox for a week. Those slots just remind you of the slots back in Lost Wages, as chronicled in Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. Available everywhere that stores wrap your purchase in plain brown paper. Yes, these blackjack tables do look inviting, but you played enough blackjack when you were in Lost Wages as documented in Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. Available at sleazier software stores everywhere in the Great Sierra Collector's Edition, Leisure Suit Larry's Greatest Hits and Misses. Yeah, baby! Your attention, please. Tonight's nude ferret legging festival has been canceled due to lack of interest. You doubt seriously if those umbrellas are real grass. wanted to play craps ever since you visited Lost Wages way back in Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. Just one of the many great games available in Sierra's handsome collector's edition, Leisure Suit Larry's Greatest Hits and Misses. Available wherever fine software is re-shrink wrapped in the back room even though they never admit that's what they do. Yeah, too bad the table's full. Even with a full table, the croupier looks dissatisfied with life. Excuse me. Huh? Shh, 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 shh. No talking, monsieur. Game in progress. The craps table is filled with men in tuxedos. There's something familiar about them, but you just can't put your finger on what it is. What's a guy got to do to play some craps around here? Well, whatever it is, I'm not doing it. Uh, do you suppose you guys can make room for me? Please? Pretty please? Oh. Hey, didn't your mother teach you to share? Guess not. Hey, uh, I hear there's free drinks at the blackjack tables. Uh, of course there's free drinks here too. That bean dip is really effective. For some reason, the craps table now stands strangely empty, just waiting for you to step up and lose your money. The croupier stands there, listless and bored. Perhaps you could cheer him up by losing a big wad of dough. So, Jacques, what's your name? Uh, Jacques. <laughs> American asshole. The croupier's name tag may say Jacques, but his look says, I get paid whether you play or not. Asshole. The craps table is a confusing mess of different betting areas. You have no idea what they represent. Well, I guess I'll just put it all on come. <laughs> come. <clears throat> yeah.
Here's my Thiesman Trophy scorecard. Charge a hundred smackers of chips to my room, will you, bub? I feel lucky. Uh, but of course, sir. Put it all on come. <laughs> With a name like that, how can I lose? Yes, sir, right away. Here your dice. American asshole. Come on, baby needs a new pair of platform shoes. Oh. Let's go again. Another hundred on come. Well, I mean, the come line. You know, the line of... with... yeah. No problem. Yankee asshole. I can feel Lady Luck coming on. Well, I guess she went right past me. Your attention, please. Megan, report to the scuba tank immediately. Ooh, these dice are hot, hot, hot. But I'm cold, cold, cold. I gotta win sometime. Time isn't now. What? Save your game? Are you trying to cheat? Uh, no. I'm not. American asshole. The scaffold may look rickety, but in fact it's incredibly rickety. Is your life insurance paid up? Eh, what's the point of life insurance when you're your own beneficiary? The scaffold looks even more rickety from up here. A little nameplate on one rail reads, Humpty Dumpty Erection. So, um, you really gonna just leave that line hanging there? Shooting fish in a barrel. No challenge. From up here, it's easy to see a large steel spike has been driven right through the ship's deck from above. A flathead screwdriver lies on top of the sculptor's toolbox. That's certainly an unimpressive tool. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. This pair of white plastic dice is just like the ones used in casinos, except for a few little specks of glue. This toolbox is filled with all the tools your modern dice sculptor needs. There once was a screwdriver right on top. Sorry, Larry, but all you need is the screwdriver. Ah, remember back at La Costa Lotta? You mean in Leisure Suit Larry 6, Shape Up or Slip Out, Sierra's first SVGA adventure game that they've just recently included in your Greatest Hits and Misses collection? Yeah. So? There I needed to take two tools. Well, you don't here. Oh yeah? How do you know? I peeked ahead in the script. Huh. So, um, tell me, do I get laid? Uh, not that much. Attention, please. The mandatory lifeboat safety drill for all passengers will be 
Bye, everybody. You'd hardly think modesty would be necessary at a clothing optional pool, but many of these people don't want to be seen undressing. Naked, sure, but removing their clothing? Really? Evidently, there's a strange collection of characters lying about at the nude pool. Yeah, baby! The cabana steward's name tag reads, Dick. How does he pin that on? Whoa, sorry dude. You gotta stop here. Why? What's wrong? You! You can't enter the pool like that. Like what? Like that! You know, dressed. Why not, dude? Safety reasons, dude. For sure. Safety reasons? Way, purser's orders. That polyester fabric could ignite in this tropical sun. So, drop them. Um. Well, I don't think I should enter naked. I mean, everyone would um, stare, you know, at my uh, <clears throat> physical attributes. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, Dick, once I went into a restaurant that required a tie, and, well, because of my personal aversion to owning anything other than leisure wear, um, I never had a tie. So, I... Sure, I got courtesy loaners. Oh. This little dude right here is exactly what you need. Oh, great. Of course I couldn't get a normal swimsuit. Can I at least have a towel to cover it up? For sure! No problem, dude. Now, don't get it wet. It might shrink. <laughs> oh, I got sunscreen in my eyes. Boy, oh, towel boy. I need a towel here, please, quick. <gasps> Oops. Oh, boy. Oh, thank you. Well, well. What have we here? <laughs> Is that your trunk or are you just glad to see me? And what's your name, little Babar? Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. And you? Drew Barrymore. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a cod piece since I took Professor Lipkin's minor playwrights of the late Elizabethan period during my sophomore year at Barnard, and I've never seen one with such a cute African influence. You know, I'm quite interested in history, but I'm essentially ignorant of anything past the tertiary level African tribes. Could you share a little of its immediate history with me? Perhaps its regional influences or its acquisition history? Oh, well, the cabana boy gave it to me because I forgot my swimsuit. Oh. Now there's something you don't see every day. Ah, a beautiful woman dressed only in sunscreen? No, a laptop computer that you can read in bright sunlight. She could be a true blonde, but with that computer there, who can tell? Drew's face is every bit the match for her body. If you couldn't plainly see, you'd swear Drew's legs go all the way up to her shoulders. If you'd just move over a little, that branch wouldn't be in the way. You'd love to move the branch, but your heart couldn't take it. The palm branch is quite strong. You'll never break it. You can't even move it.
This is your favorite part of the game, isn't it? Drew never computes without her SPF 300. Want me to rub some of that sunscreen on your back, Drew? No, I just applied some. Too bad you were late. I had trouble getting it on the small of my back. Oh. What's wrong, Larry? Codpiece too tight? Looks like Drew is reading The Erotic Adventures of Hercules. That guy on the cover makes Fabio look like a 98-pound weakling. Well, Mr. Grabby, not much on manners, are we? Shouldn't we ask the lady's permission to borrow her reading matter instead of just stealing it? Drew's laptop has a problem with overheating. It needs one of those new low-voltage chippy thingies. Who said the heat was coming from the computer? Want me to recharge your laptop? Oh no, Larry, that's not necessary. I can still feel the juices flowing. Oh, me too. Mind if I borrow your laptop to check my email? Oh, I'm working offline. I didn't even bring my cellular modem. You might say I'm computing au naturel. No kidding. You don't have any clothing at all, do you, Drew? Of course not. I love nudism so much that just as soon as I board ship, I get rid of every single piece of pesky clothing. Good idea. And I force my cabin boy to lock up my suitcase someplace where I can't possibly find it so I can spend the entire week here by the pool, naked. I eat, sleep, sun, and swim here, never leaving the comfort of the chaise. It may not be an ideal vacation for everyone, but for me, well, it's what I love most. Oh, this tropical sun is brutal. I hope you don't mind, Larry, but I need to spend a few minutes rubbing this sunscreen all over my naked body. <laughs> need help? No, but nice try. I really like the way it makes my skin glisten, you know? The way it brings out the soft little hairs on the back of my neck, my arms, my... Stop! I can't take it! Aww. I didn't realize I was being so hard on you. Excuse me, Larry. Here comes a waiter. This'll just take a second. Waiter! A waiter! Hey there, beautiful. What can I do for you? I want a gigantic erection. Looks like your uh, little buddy there's got you covered, huh? What? I said bring me a gigantic erection. Well, okay, baby. I'm your man. Well, where is it? I'm working on it. Am I moving that computer? <laughs> Look, I want a mixed drink. A cocktail. You know, lime juice, 151 proof rum, vodka, triple sec, mayonnaise with a hollowed out frozen banana to suck through. You know, a gigantic erection. Okay, but uh, it'll take a while, you know. So, you recognize this as a con piece? Of course. It's been a few years, but I believe my college text defined it as a pouch at the crotch of the tight-fitting breeches worn by men in the 15th and 16th centuries. It's from the Middle English word cod pes. A cod, a bag, a scrotum, which came from the Old English word cod, meaning bag plus pes, meaning piece. Is that your understanding, Larry? Yeah. Thanks. Aren't you worried about overexposure? Oh no, not anymore. Sure, once upon a time I had to limit my exposure, especially on a tropical cruise like this, but ever since I discovered this SPF 300, I have no problems at all. Every few minutes I carefully, slowly, thoroughly rub it over every single inch of my naked body. Oh. And of course my laptop computer here does offer some protection, although I do get a peculiar tan line. Oh. Larry, is my nudity making you uncomfortable? Is this hard for you? No, it's been like this ever since I got here. So, uh, did I ever tell you I know Al Lowe personally? Who? Oh, I remember him. He came through here last November. Unimpressive. Yeah, maybe. Not him, Larry. You. Drew, would you mind if I borrowed your book? Not at all. I finished it. I've always been very fond of that wonderful German inventor, Anton Fokker. <laughs> Have you ever heard of him? Anton Fokker? But of course, I wrote the book on him. 
So you have heard of him? No, I mean, I literally wrote the book on him. I'm the author of his best-selling biography. It's recognized everywhere as the classic treatise on the subject. I called it Fokker, more than just an airplane. Uh, yeah. Um, I just love discussing historical aircraft designers. Me too! You know, it's funny, Larry. It seems like these cruise ships are filled with phonies who just want to bore me. I could see that. But it's wonderful to find a kindred spirit like you, someone interested in aviation history, particularly the airplanes of my dear sweet Anton. Excuse me, could you look me in the eyes? Oh, uh, sorry. So, you really know a lot about this guy, huh? Oh, yes. Fokker, Anton Hermann Gerard, 1890-1939, Dutch-born German-American aircraft designer and aircraft manufacturer, born Java. His factories in Germany produced triplanes and biplanes used in World War I. He revolutionized aerial warfare by synchronizing a front-mounted machine gun to fire through the propeller of a plane without intercepting the blades, 1915. He later turned to developing commercial aircraft and came to the U.S. in 1922. Wow! You really know a lot about those Fokkers. I've always felt Anton never received the recognition he so sorely deserved. Oh, you are knowledgeable, aren't you, Larry? Yes, Anton was a wonderful inventor, a genius, really, but he wasn't a brilliant businessman. It was his mother who really ran the company, you know. Yes, she was a tyrant who ruled with an iron fist. You mean? Yes, she was one mean motherfucker. Ugh. I think we could all see that one coming. I would really enjoy having a more in-depth discussion with you, Drew. Really? Me too. In fact, I could fuck her all night long. Oh, uh, that's pretty much what I was thinking. So, uh, you want to go back to my room to see my aircraft etchings? I'd love to, but I can't. Excuse me, could you look me in the eyes? Oh, uh, sorry. What do you mean, you can't? I can't, because remember, I ordered the cabin boy to lock up my clothing for the duration of the cruise, and you know I just can't violate the ship's rules and walk brazenly, boldly naked through the clothing required parts of the ship like some sort of exhibitionist. That would never do. No, I'll just have to stay here, lying here naked all night, the cool tropical breezes gently wafting over my bare skin. Oh, I can't believe I've got to get a totally naked woman into her clothing. I think I'll have a drink myself. Oh, uh, waiter, I want the same thing the lady ordered. Nice suit. Uh, no, uh, please, bring me a gigantic erection. Oh, uh, that'll take a while for the bartender to fix. Wait right here. I've never heard of a gigantic erection. Oh, it's my favorite drink, Larry. Usually I suck it all down, then nibble for hours on its hard, frozen banana. Oh, lordy, lordy, help me, lordy. I guess I don't have to tell you, I'm kind of a lonely guy. <laughs> yeah, Larry, you look like the kind of guy who would be lonely. That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, this is my laptop. Oh, you can keep it. It wasn't that good. I found the plot development weak, the characters shallow, and the overall structure entirely predictable. And besides, there's not enough dirty parts. My, Larry, what a long hose you have. It's hot enough out here without that. Thanks. Let me just crack open its skin and suck the juices out from the firm flesh waiting inside. Mmm. Ooh, that was refreshing. Thanks, Larry. I already have something to read. Sticky. Oh, I never use that for screen cleaner. 
I don't gamble. Ooh, you're not doing so well, huh? Ouch! That's as rough as a cob. Your room? Can't. I'm all naked and shipboard regulations strictly prohibit the passage of unsuitably clothed passengers through public areas of the ship. But then you probably knew that. Uh, Drew, I'm gonna go now. Okay, maybe we'll be seeing more of each other soon. Like that's possible. <laughs>